Ladies and gents, from Marshall, check it out. The JTM20 and matching 212 cabinet. You heard this gear on that song at the beginning of the video. When I got this thing, I unboxed it. I put the cab in my other room. I mic'd it up. I put the, the mic on the speaker right about, you know, approximately where I thought it should go. Came in here, turned up the dials, I jumpered the channels, I pulled up the fader and I played a couple chords and I was like, whoa, this thing sounds really, really good. Both the cabinet and the amplifier with my new Soyuz microphone just made a guitar sound that sounded just terrific. And that's basically the tone of the first guitar part that you hear on that song at the beginning of the video. <laughs> Just classic, straight up, good old rock and roll Marshall goodness. Now this amplifier joins a couple other amplifiers in Marshall's Studio Vintage line. For a few years now, they've had a couple amps out. The uh, SV20, which is kind of a 1959 super lead style circuit. They've also got a JCM800 style amp in the series. And now they've got this true JTM45 style amp, which obviously tonally and also cosmetically echoes the very, very earliest Marshall amps made sometime around 63 or 64 when Jim Marshall started producing amplifiers and selling them out of his shop in the UK. And now they've got a JTM 45 style amp joining the series. And obviously they went for the sonics, but also the cosmetics of those very, very earliest Marshall amplifiers. It's just so cool, like the Tolex and the, uh, the small Marshall faceplate and just the whole look with the silver panel and the knobs they've recreated it all it's a really really beautiful package now those earliest jtm 45 amps they were born out of a need for amplifiers in the uk i mean you had a burgeoning you know happening music scene in the uk and a need for amplifiers but there wasn't enough amps and guitars and stuff coming from overseas from companies like fender so jim thought there's an opportunity here to make something so he essentially kind of cloned the Fender 1959 Tweed Basement Circuit and made that amplifier in the UK, but he just made it out of locally available parts that he could source easily in the UK. So these amplifiers are really interesting. The JTM45 sound is kind of like a bridge between Fender and Marshall. So this amp features a pair of 5881s. It doesn't have a tube rectifier. His big brother JTM45 reissue has a tube rectifier. I can only guess why they chose to not do a tube rectifier and do a regular solid state rectifier, but it could be because you've already got a 20 watt uh, cathode bias power amp, it's a little lower power. It's got a nice sort of softer, you know, great pillowy kind of squishy feel to it. Maybe going to a tube rectifier would be too much in that direction. So let's look at the features just really quick here. You've got four inputs, just like the classic Marshall amps with uh, the non-master volume style amps. You've essentially got your, your normal channel over here with a high and a low gain input, and then you got your high treble input uh, volume control here with a high and a low input. Having the four inputs will allow you to jump for the channels if you want and blend those two sounds. The normal channel is kind of dark and neutral sounding, and the high treble channel has more high end kick and a little more clarity to it for sure. You got your full four band classic Marshall EQ there with the presence, the bass, the middle, and the treble. Over here, a really cool feature, you got a low power switch. So you can go from the full 20 watts down to a reduced wattage setting. I would say it drops the power, or at least the volume, by maybe six or seven dB, something like that. I'm gonna show it in a little bit. Let's take a look at the back for a second here. You've basically got, let's see, uh, speaker jacks here for 16 ohm, eight ohm, four ohm, and all the combinations that you can imagine of those cabs. You've also got a DI output here. That could be handy if you wanna run into some like effects and then into maybe a power amp. And you know, to get more volume out of it, you could run into a tube power amp or even a solid state power amp and 
crank it up even louder if you feel like you need more than 20 watts. So that DI output could come in handy for some players. You also got an effects loop here with a send and return and a switch to take it out of the circuit if you want to. With that effect loop there, you know, you could run some uh, some overdrives and maybe a compressor or wah or something in front and then run delays and reverbs in the loop and have a great little club gigging amp. Now it's not gonna do metal, it doesn't have switchable channels and all this stuff. This is an amplifier for folks that want the full vintage deal, really, really simple, but at a reasonable reduced volume and with a great classic look. And it'll do metal, I guess, if you wanna add some pedals to the front end, but you're gonna need a pedal to do that kind of thing. But that's not what it's made for, obviously. So I'm gonna play some more through the amplifier. I'm gonna solo some of those parts from the song at the beginning of the video outside of the mix. Let's get into it. It is the JTM 20 from Marshall. <laughs> So I just got a part with my telly, rhythm part. Sounds really cool. I'm jumper in the input, so I've got both channels going, using primarily volume one or the treble channel, uh, but blending in the normal channel a little bit. This is the tone. <laughs> Sounds awesome in the middle position on this guitar. If I go to the bridge pickup. I did add a pedal to this sound when I was recording the rhythm part because I wanted to just clarify the tone in the middle a little bit. It sounds great on its own right now, but in the mix I found it was just getting ever so slightly lost. And I thought, I want to try lots of pedals with this amp anyway, because it's the kind of amp that just eats pedals. It's just awesome with pedals. Maybe you can hear it. it's subtle when I turned it on, but that's my unit 67. I'm using it for a hair treble boost, just a little bit of gain boost, and it just clarifies the sound a little bit for that riff. Okay, so I've got the pedal off now, and I'm gonna turn some knobs on the amp so you can hear what the controls do. So let's start with the presence, because the presence is super powerful in these amps. Right, makes a huge difference, the presence on these amps. So I like it somewhere above noon, but you know, six, seven maybe. Now the bass on a JTM 45 style amp, um, they can be quite overbearing if you turn them up, the bass controls on these amps. So there's lots of bass in the front end of the amp as it is, especially if you got the normal channel involved in the tone. Um, but let's turn it. Right, gets woolly and a bit fuzzy when you turn it up. Might be what you want, but I kind of like to keep it down below half, maybe on two or three. Good right there to me with this guitar. And then the mid control on any Marshall, really, really powerful. Uh, this is no exception. You're gonna find it just fills in the sound and adds gain when you turn it up. Trouble may be the control that affects the tone the least on an amp like this, I think. Okay, and then I've got the ch channels jumpered once again. Let's see, volume one here is cranked up pretty high to like seven or eight. Pull the jumper for a minute. You're gonna hear the gain go up a little bit when I pull the jumper. Cool 
cool thing about a JTM 45, and uh, this isn't to say that 1987s or 1959s, the later Super Leads, aren't awesome, because they're actually some of my favorite amplifiers of all time, but they are sort of more one-trick ponies, and that's because of the bright cap. I've talked about this extensively on my channel in that particular circuit, but on a, on a JTM 45, they've got a totally different bright cap, and it makes the range of usable volume across treble channel volume one really usable all the way across. So I'll show you what I mean. It's not a one trick pony. You know, there's a wide range of sounds there. Now going over to the other channel, this is the darker of the two channels. You know, if you hit it with a treble booster, it can sound cool. Let me show you what that sounds like. That's my uh, Unit 67 Range Master style boost in front of just the normal channel, the darker of the two channels. So much like an AC30 for the Brian May thing, if you go into the normal channel and crank it, hit it with a treble booster, you get a great sound. JTM45 can sound great with a treble booster in front of it as well and get a really good sound. I find on its own kind of dark into, into the normal channel. <laughs> Just needs a little bit more top end. But that's why, you know, everybody uses the jumper. As soon as you plug in that jumper cable, I like to go into to input one and then take the bottom of input one and go to the top input two, like this. And then just blend in that normal channel just a little bit. Like, so let's bring up volume one to, you know, quite high, seven or so. We'll just bring this up a little bit. <laughs> So I just recorded a little slide part in the song, and for this, I'm stacking a bunch of pedals because I wanted to try the amp with pedals and see how, you know, stacking worked. And so I'm using my Unit 67 for a bit of clean boost, and that's running into a woodshed compressor, and then I'm adding uh, a bit of a Klon style drive um, from my Unobtainium for Crave Z tube circuits, and last up, I've got an Echoplex pedal. So when I stack, it's going to get noisy because of the the single coils in this guitar, just how it is. You know, they're just kind of noisy, but. That's the sound without any pedals. And now let me turn on everything here. Here's the boost, the compressor, Klon style drive, everything. Echoplex is a lot of buzz from the single coils. But Just a fun little sound for, for slide, fun, dirty. You know, and stacking all these pedals works great into the front of the amp. So I just cut lead part in the song at the beginning of the video. And for this, I just bumped the front end, goosed the front end with um, my Klon style drive, uh, my crazy tube circuits that's on my pedal board. So without it, it sounds like this. And that's with the, the volume all the way up to about eight or so on the treble channel only. Maybe it's on nine. You know, when it's all the way up, it's just a little bit it loose for me and um when i hit it with a pedal then it was getting really mushy so it's like i think it sounds better back down a little bit and then get a little more of the gain you know it's all a balancing act right get a little more of the gain out of the pedal <laughs> playing something like that but anyways um you know just tons of fat drive in the front and you can hear how fat it is single notes 
on this amp, when you turn up the preamp this high, I mean, it's got a fat front end on it. So even bridge humbucker, you know, it's gonna have great, big, fat, warm, single notes. <laughs> So I wanted to try the low power switch and see how much volume it actually cuts off and if it changes the tone at all. Let's give it a listen. Yeah, it seems to do a really good job. Um, I would say it's like probably, you know, 5, 6 dB down at least, you know, like a, maybe uh, the perception is of half volume. Um, I'd say it's still making a fair amount of volume in the cab in the other room. I don't know if it's exactly like bedroom volume, you know, if you crank the amp up, 20 watts can still be pretty loud and even 5 watts can still be pretty loud. Uh, you know, so it just depends on your needs. But I would say that if you're doing a low volume session or gig, that's definitely going to be a handy asset to have the low power switch. Thanks for watching my video on the Marshall JTM 20. Super cool 20 watt, super classic looking amplifier in the style of the classic vintage JTM 45. The matching 212 cabinet that features Celestion G12M cream back speakers. The cab sounds great, the amp sounds great. Once again, it's not going to be for everybody, it's going to be for folks that really appreciate a vintage non-master volume style amplifier that does classic tones, uh, but that doesn't, you know, take your head off with volume. Get you evicted from your apartment, kicked out of your band, fired from your gig, and hey, bring this thing home, look at how handsome it is, your significant other will probably dig it. Nice piece of furniture, you can dress it up, put some plants on top or something, it's going to look great in your living room, or it's going to look great on stage at your gig. So you can check it out further, that link down there in the video description below. Click there, it'll take you to more info about the JTM 20 and the matching 212. Thanks for checking out the video, you guys. Thanks for subscribing to the channel. Please subscribe if you haven't. And as always, I appreciate you and hope to have you back and see you soon for more videos. All right, take care. See you guys. Over now.